Hi there. And this brings us a last problem. Last problem. And then on solving this, we obtain lambda 1 and 2 to be equal to 1 plus or minus i. And then lambda 3 um, equals 1. And this brings us to the third step. The third step is to find the corresponding aging vectors of the aging values that we got. Now, I'm going to start with a simple one, which is the real one. We have two complex aging values. You can see they are complex conjugates of each other. And then we also have one real aging value. So I'm going to start by finding the aging vector that corresponds to the aging value that we have, that we have here. So I want to solve for for lambda equals lambda equals 1. So for lambda equals 1, a minus lambda i minus lambda i times x is the same thing as wherever you have lambda, you place it 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, so there should be a negative lambda here. I believe so, yeah. 1 minus 1 is also 0, 1 minus 1 is 0, so you have 0, you have 0, you have 0, you have negative 1, 2, negative 1, 0, negative 1, 0. Then our x is x, y, z equals 0. This is what you obtain. And then to solve this linear system here, the very first thing you have to do is you will reduce the coefficient matrix, this coefficient matrix here. So to canonical form, on reducing that, what you obtain after reduction of this coefficient matrix, what you obtain is, um, I think you have one, this is, this is one, zero, 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 one, negative two, and then zero, zero, zero. That is where you obtain. Then you have to write this and this back the way they are. You have x, y, z equals 0, 0, 0. Then the next thing you do is you write back, write all these things back in equation format. That is, multiply this matrix by this column matrix. And then what you obtain is x equals 0. You have y minus 2z equals zero. Now to solve this thing, the equation we obtain from here is actually the solution of this equation is, is like this 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 system here is going to have an infinite number of solutions as you can see from here. So then since we have an infinite number of solutions we need to find the basis of the solution space. To find the basis of the solution space I need a free variable. Of x, y and z the free variable is z. So since the free variable is z. I'm going to set z to be any number, but I'm going to choose 1. So if z is 1, then my x, as given above, is 0, while my y, my y is 2. So with that, I've been able to find, I can find my k3 that corresponds to, this is my lambda 3 here. And that's going to be x, which is 0, my y, which is 2, and my z, which is 1 times e to the power e to the power t. So next, I go ahead in trying to find the aging vector that corresponds to these complex aging values. So let me write down my, my complex aging value given above there. So I was given lambda 1 to, um, to be equal to 1 plus or minus i. And then I said in the past video that if you want to find the aging vector that corresponds to these complex aging values in real form, what you do is call one of them, call it lambda 1. So we say let lambda 1 equals 1 plus i. If we either choose lambda to be equal to 1 negative i, it doesn't really matter, you understand. So if lambda 1 equals 1 plus i, to find the aging vector that corresponds to, we say let let k1 be the aging vector corresponding corresponding to to lambda 1 
So K1 is the aging vector. So let me go ahead and find K1. So to find K1, we solve the same standard equation for aging vector this. So we want to find this way so x is the aging vector that corresponds to lambda. So for for lambda now, lambda 1 equals 1 plus i, which is what we want to use. So a minus lambda i x equals, so what we have is, so wherever we have lambda, we replace it with 1 plus i. That's all we're doing. So this is going to give us negative i, we have minus 1. We have 2, we have negative 1, negative i, we have 0, we have negative 1, 0, negative i. This is what we have, and then we have our x, this is our x here, y, and z. And then this equals, equals 0. So, again, we have a system of linear equation to solve the system. We need to go reduce... So we will reduce this coefficient matrix here, and then after our reduction, what we obtain is 1, 0, i. We have 0, 1, negative 1. Then you have 0, 0, 0. That's what you obtain. Then you have your x, y, z equals 0, 0, 0. That's what you obtain. Now, so the next thing you do here is you will write this whole thing here in equation format. So 1 times x, that's x. Just multiply this matrix by this column matrix. So on multiplication, we have x plus i, z equals 0. And then y minus z equals 0. So similarly, again, this is a free variable. So since the free variable, we say set z equals 1. So then y equals 1. And then x equals negative negative i. So I've been able to find my k1. My k1 is my x, which is negative i. My y is 1, and my z is 1. So, and we said the next step here is to factorize k1. So what I mean there is, since that k1 that is written there is negative i, 1, 1. So factorizing it simply means that I want you to rewrite k1 in a format such that I can distinctly differentiate the real component of k1 from the imaginary component. In other words, let us write each of the entries in this column matrix as a linear combination of 1 and the imaginary number. So you have 0, negative i. 1 plus 0 i, 1 plus 0 i. And this is the same thing as 0, 1, 1. Plus, so what I'm doing here, this is my 0, my 1, my 1. Which is 0, 1, 1. So, and then the other one, which is minus 1, 0, 0. Then we have our i here. Now looking at these two entities here, you'd observe this is going to be the real part, while this will be the imaginary part. I'll explain in the last video as I explained there. So we said the next thing you want to do is you will let B1 to be the real part of K1 and let B2 be the imaginary part of K1. So B1 is the real part of K1, which is this. So that implies that B1 equals 0, 1, 1 and b2 equals negative 1, 0, 0. So having gotten this, I'm going to write it again at a general formula, the general formula or the general solution for a case where we have complex aging values is given by x equals c1. So we are x equals c1 e to the power alpha t into b1 cosine of beta t plus okay this will be negative this does minus this minus uh, 
b b2 sine of beta t and plus c2 into e to the power alpha t into um, yeah this is beta so this time around beta 2 comes first that's b2 comes first b2 cosine of beta t then instead of a negative sign here this time around we're gonna have a positive sign here because b1 sine of beta t yeah so this is what we should have so and then we said what we have here is x1 and then what we have here would be our x2 so you can see that it's like a linear combination of something so having known that so i'm going to say my x1 equals e to the power alpha t so let, let's let's go up here to find our alpha so we said lambda 1 equals 1 plus i so that is alpha plus i beta. So you observe that your alpha is going to be 1. And this is 1 here. So your beta is also 1. So alpha equals 1. And our beta equals 1. So alpha equals 1. Beta equals 1. So we have e to the power alpha, which is 1t, into our b1. This is our b1 here. Our b1 is here. So that is 0, 1, 1 cosine of beta t we said our beta is 1 so cosine of t minus our b2 which is negative 1 0 0 times sine of beta t our beta is 1 as, as shown above then we have we have this so we are closing brackets now then our x2 equals e to the power alpha which is 1 t into our b2 which is negative 1 0 0 cosine of beta t so our beta is 1 so that's cosine of t plus our b1 which is 0 1 1 sine sine of t that's what we have so now we have our x1 we have our x2 and then up above this is our k3 so we can obtain our x3 to be we said that uh, 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 where, where, where is it so this is this is k3 here k3 does not have this so x3 is k3 e to the power e to the power lambda, lambda 3 t and that will be k3 which is 0 to 1 e to the power t so I'm going to write the whole thing down there so therefore the general solution which is x equals c1 x1 plus c2 x2 plus c3 x3 and that's going to be c1 times our x1 now when we simplify all what we have here that's 0 times this plus 1 times sine t that's sine t then this 1 times cosine of t minus 0 times this that's cosine t and 1 times this minus 0 times this so what we have for x1 x1 is going to be sine sine t cosine t cosine of t e to the power t plus c2 when we simplify what we have here so we have e to the power t which is the e to the power t here and then adding this and this together what we have is negative cosine of t sine of t and then sine sine of t and then lastly plus c3 times x3 so x3 was shown above and we had that to be 0 to 1 e to the power t all that we have obtained is the general solution of the homogeneous system that was posted above and that completes the problem.